you have to leave the world in a better position than when you arrived. Now what I do today, a hundred years from now, who gives a damn? In my own soul, my own consciousness, my own being, I've made a contribution. And of that I'm proud. Why are we here? parents were not well-to-do. They were, I would think, lower middle class. But I went to a school where there was certainly a number of wealthy students in it. And I saw that they did indeed live differently than I did. And they had things that I didn't have. You got to play the cards you're dealt with. I think I learned at a very early age that I wanted to have better status than what my parents enjoyed. I decided that I was going to do well as a student. I got three bachelor's degrees, I got three master's degrees, and I got a double doctorate. I got two doctorates. I got involved with the Detroit Police Department. They were understaffed and overworked. And in Detroit, it was all black youth, uh, downtown youth. My job was as a clinical psychologist with teenagers. They were all criminals. They were, most of them, drug dealers. And um, they had a choice. They could opt for counseling or they could go to jail. In nine months, I had 100% uh, failure rate. I didn't re rehabilitate anybody. So it certainly opened my eyes to what should be, what could be, and what is. A posting came up at the University of Toronto. They needed someone in their educational facility, the Faculty of Education. I applied for it. Terrible, terrible interview. Well, six months later, they offered me the job. I don't know what, what was that turned them around, but here I am. I was the youngest uh, faculty member in the faculty of ed. And I can recall uh, moving to Toronto and I found an apartment and um, somebody suggested that my income level, I shouldn't be paying rent, I should buy myself a house. And then I found something that maybe made more economic economic sense than a house that was called a duplex, two houses under the same roof. And I thought, gee, that's a pretty good idea. I could rent one out and live in the other one and I could virtually live rent free. So I bought one. I bought another quadruplex. And it was in the beaches area and it was a rather depressed area at that time not what it is today. I went out and bought another one and another one. Having all these fourplexes, and then I started dabbling in building houses, I started making my annual salary every month in real estate. I made a lot of money, a lot of money doing that. I made millions. I made so much money, I didn't know what to do with it. I bought a Rosedale home, it was a mansion. Um, I was going to tear it down because it sat on two lots. I was going to build two houses and sell them. But the house was so magnificent, I made it my principal residence. On a whim, I went out and uh, I bought myself a new Rolls Royce, paid cash for it. Still couldn't spend the money I was making. Had three wives, but they never lasted. Um, it was because I was a silly bugger. I had more money than brains. Um, in those days, I guess I'd have to label myself, and I'm not proud of it either. I, I was a womanizer, uh, not faithful to my wives, not their fault. Oh, 
I don't think you can live through life and not have regrets. When I was a young man and had all the money I could spend, um, I probably had an ego inflated just as much as the money. One morning I came out in my driveway. There were five cars, one being the Rolls Royce, another one being a Corvette, another one being a Jaguar, an Alfa Romeo, and of all things, a Jeep. And the only one I drove was the Jeep. The one morning I'm talking about, I said, what the hell am I doing with five cars? And uh, it just wasn't me. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't what I call making me happy. So I got rid of them, got rid of them all. I kept the Jeep. And um, I found out that money didn't seem to have a lot of interest for me. I've uh, been fortunate that I've, I have seen our world. And um, the bottom line was the money, the traveling, still didn't create what I would call being happy. I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled. And at that time, I started to give away some of my surplus funds to charity. It was I guess unrewarding at the time when I think of it. I gave it away because I had surplus funds. But I didn't necessarily know where it was going. It, it seems to be a rather nebulous field out there. It, it went to help a number of people. but. I started to look at charities to see actually where the money went. And I found that some charities are really quite bogus, that 90% of the money goes to administration and 10% and less goes to actually the recipients that need it. So I started to think about maybe I should start my own charity and do something in that direction. Well. I did, and to this day, and I guess that's two and a half decades ago, I've been contributing to my own charity. And um, this is a very, very private thing I have, my charity work. I don't like to broadcast it. Very, very, very few people know that I do it. I work today at age 75 simply to contribute to my charity. I have a reasonable pension. It uh, satisfies all my needs. But um, there's really not too much left over for my charity work. So I have a job. I sell cars. And frankly, I enjoy it. But the money I make at it, I give it all away. You see the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer and the middle class shrinking. I think we have to be more charitable with our fellow human beings. Like, what's somebody doing with a billion dollars? What's that all about? I had a few million and I didn't know what the hell to do with it. Well, I found something to do with it, I gave it away. I'm proud in that I've been able to help. As I've grown older, the ego certainly is waning I'm not looking for the accolades of a, a society that, uh, say, oh, he's given away all this amount of money. You know, let's pat him on the back. Let's have a let's have a dinner for him. And I don't want that. I don't. So, what is life all about? Life is, as Bertram Russell said on his 90th birthday, they asked him exactly that question: What's life all about? He said. Life goes on. Simple, but profound when you think of it. If I'm in good health, as good as I am today, I hope I have 10 more years. I don't have any great goals at this point in my lifetime. I have no mountains to climb. I have got no songs to be sung. I am gradually preparing myself to 
spread out and gradually fade off into the sunset. And I'm hoping that when uh, the day I do leave this, uh, this world that it'll just be very quiet and that's it. That's it. Gone with the wind. <laughs>